Now, if you consider that, one-fourth of the world's population are using this word, Allah, to represent the one only God. Plus, the Christians and Jews who are Arabs are using that word. So, now if you want to talk about who's normal. Huh? This is just to level the playing ground. I'm not trying to prove a point, I'm just trying to bring some evidence for the point that I am going to try to prove. I'm going to attempt now for, to kind of shake your mind up a little bit and show you why Muslims use the word Allah. First of all, the Quran is only in the Arabic language. As I mentioned when we started the program, the Quran is not in any other language. And it doesn't translate. We can discuss meanings all day long in other languages and we do that. As Sheikh Suhaib said, very clear. At the same time, though, if you want to know what did Allah say, you don't say He said something in the English language. In fact, the Bible itself was not revealed in the English language. There was no such thing as English even 1,000 years ago. Huh? There were no English speakers because there was no English until after the Normans invaded the Saxons in the year 1066 A.D. Uh -oh. But the Semitic languages, which are Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic, are sister languages, and they go back to pre-recorded history. So again, setting the tone, which one has the more credibility? And what did they say in Aramaic? How many of you heard about a movie called Passion of the Christ? Again, all the Muslims who went to see it. What's this? Hmm. Is that right? That's cool. And who produced it? Oh. What's this? Why do I look so cute on TV? <laughs> Oh, this is one of the questions. Oh, right, this is one of the questions. Which side of the room did it come from? That's right. No, that's right. He didn't know he was being set up. I told him to do that. Give me five. I can't believe he went for it again, can you? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> it's actually in my style, really, to break things up because this is a very important topic. Not only do I like to keep the Muslims awake, but you know, when you're giving Juma, how many times the brothers in there going, oh. <laughs> It's uh, one time in a week when they can relax and there's no noise, you know? Later on, you ask him, how was it doing? Oh, Juma, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> what was it about? Uh, about 30 minutes. <laughs> so that's why I tell him, when about 30 minutes goes by, let's wake everybody up again. But to come back to our subject, about the word Allah, and why Muslims are using this word Allah. As we've just demonstrated, we find that many of the people around the entire earth Touch the keypad on that. Just touch it. It should come back up. Just touch it. Doesn't like you, does it? There it goes. You, you can't. They can hardly see you. Well, by the way, this is a live broadcast that's going on in one of our chat rooms. It's time for a commercial, by the way. Chatislam.com. C H A T I S L A M.com. And we broadcast live programs like this every week. And it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you any money at all, but you do have to put up with some of my lame jokes. But we do have Sheikh Salman Amri with us from UAE. We have Mutar Sabri from Columbia, South Carolina. Yusha Evans. I'm talking about these are all people who converted to Islam, by the way. Yusha Evans down in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're working on getting Suhaib Webb to join along with us and some of the others who are broadcasting on a daily basis. And we're going to be taking this to our other website called guideus.tv and you'll see there, say, at Raji in Toronto, Canada. Anybody from Canada? 
Every can one, two, any others? Canada, three. Canada, one, so long. Right. This is a little update for you, another little plug. Dr. Zachar Knight will be in Toronto, Canada for a week in July. Exciting? Peace TV coming your way. Yes, sir. Peace TV and Hoover TV, by the way, are our media partners. And we have agreements. They promote what we do. We promote what they do. So that's why I'm sticking that in here right now. Now to coming back to our program, already in progress. Why do Muslims say Allah? Allah is the name that the author, if you will, of the Quran calls himself. Allah calls himself Allah in the Quran. So it is really inappropriate for me to give him any other name, isn't it? I mean, if he says my name is so-and-so, then that's what you would call him. And for this reason, to start with, I should consider. He called himself Allah. Why don't I say Allah? Now, what did Mel Gibson do with Passion of the Christ? He went all the way to Syria to get the only people left on earth that still speak the Aramaic language of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, spoke what language? Aramaic. Yes or no? And those people who are left on earth that still speak his language happen to be in Syria, which is a Muslim country, and they have been protected for 1,400 years by the Muslims. That fact tells you that all these lies going on the internet are basically that, a bunch of lies. Because if Muslims were out to get Christians, it would be real easy to take these people. By the way, uh, to give you an idea, their lifestyle, these people are mostly farmers. If you're, are you familiar with the Amish people, the Quakers, people like that? that? These are real simple people. No weapons. If the Muslims wanted to get rid of anybody, they could go there and do it. But they have a big respect for them. They're very kind to them, and they protect them. It's evidenced by the fact that they're still there. And the fact that Mel Gibson had to go there to get in the movie itself, in the Aramaic language, you can hear the one who pretended to be Jesus. By the way, he got hit by lightning three times while they were shooting that. And he'd be like, isn't that a sign? I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> okay! <laughs> anyway, it's true, he got hit by lightning three times. Anyhow. In the movie, you see the one playing the part of Jesus using that term, Allah. And then if you want to open up the New Testament, you can just look at it. It says Eli. Okay, in English, Eli. But actually, these are trying to pronounce words from the Aramaic language. They're trying to pronounce words from a long time ago when they did the translation. And the word, like, the word Allah, in some countries, they would say Allah. Like, for instance, Al-Bayt. I'm saying A-L-B-A-Y-T. Al-Bayt. But they'll say El-Bayt. E-L. They do that in Morocco. They use E-L when they go to English, yes or no? Yeah, or French use an E-L, right? So, if you said E-L, L, and then the possessive, Ownership is E at the end of something. Beiti. Bait is house. Beiti, my house. Right? Is that right? So if I say Elehi, what am I saying? Huh? My God. Elehi. Elehi. Lima sabatani. My God, my God. Why have you deserted me? And this is what we find twice in the New Testament. The very words that we're using right now are still in the English inside of the Bible that they're handing out in the motels and hotels and not just in the translation, but actually in the very text itself. And then it says in parentheses, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Allahi, Allahi. Lima sabatani. Think about it. Think about it. 
No. Elohim. Elohim. That's Old Testament. This is Elohim. This is for God. It represents it. But they never met, pronounced the tetronomogram. They never pronounced it because it's forbidden to do that in Jewish law. You cannot do it. This is why they don't put any vowel markings on that particular word. In fact, they say they've lost the word which means God. They say that. But yet Elohim is what we say, only we pronounce it Elohim. Oops. It's again the same, isn't it? And how about Yahweh? Job. Job's witness. Anybody is Job's witness here? Have any Job's witness? No? They're all out and busy knocking on doors. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to see people are excited about what they believe. I have no problem with that. But by the way, Muslims don't go knocking doors. Uh, not a good idea for us. Okay. <laughs> not a good idea. Hi, I'm your local Muslim. You have a right. So, Jehovah is definitely an English pronunciation of the word Yahweh. It's Yahweh without any vowels. Non Jews added vowels and said, well, it's probably Yahuwah. But it's Yahweh. Wah. Now, where does that, how come V became Wah? Well, if you know anything, how many from Pakistan? Anybody Pakistan? Anybody know Urdu language? Anybody German? Anybody know German language? Yeah, well, in Germany is where they mix the Volkswagen. That's what they call it, Volkswagen. We pronounce it Volkswagen. <laughs> it's a reversal of the letter. And it's the same exact thing when we say Jehovah, Yahweh. Now watch. Let's don't guess at what it is. Let's just look and see. It says that the translating of this, going back to the verb, the root, and the Hebrew language in Strong's Concordance of the Bible says that it's calling upon the living God. How do you call upon somebody? You go, hey, right? Hey, how do you do that in Arabic? Yah, yah. Am I right or wrong? Yah, how, wah. Yah, how, How about this? Yah, hai. Yah, hai. Yah, hai. Yah, hai. What am I saying? I'm calling on the living God in Arabic language. The exact same thing, there's no difference. It's not like it is a different pronunciation, but the same meaning, the same words. Just how you twist your mouth when you say it. So I'm going to ask you again, what's the most logical word if you want to be normal? Allah. And what does Allah mean? And this is now the point that I want to try to prove, so listen carefully. The word Allah cannot be made plural, nor can it have gender. It is not plural and it's not gender. Right away somebody say, wait a minute, in the Quran it said we, us, our. Throughout the Quran Allah is saying we, us, and our. That looks like a plural to me, there's your trinity. No it didn't. That's called the royal we. Just like when a king or queen make a, any kind of a declaration or proclamation, they say, we declare the following. It's the royal we in Arabic, just like we use the royal we in the English language. As far as gender, you say, oh, well, everywhere you look, it says, huwa, which means he is. Or you'll find that when it says Allah, who, which means Allah, he is. But again, it's out of respect and the majesty of Allah not to represent gender. The word Allah does not represent gender, and it is so unique. It's the proper name for the one who is so unique. There's nothing like him. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Say he is Allah, the unique, uniquely Ahad, one. The word in Arabic for one is Wahad, but the word Ahad is from that, and it means a one that no two is going to come after, you know? Well, you got one, and you're never going to match it. Kind of like my socks at night. I look under the bed, I can't ever find it. Okay, but I'm not going to compare a lot of my socks. I'm just saying, though, that number I had doesn't really have anything else like it. And Allah is uniquely one. So, 